The golden ratio is a hidden pattern woven into the very fabric of nature, a source of fascination and wonder for mathematicians, artists, and scientists alike for centuries. It is often associated with beauty, a divine proportion that can be found in anything that is aesthetically pleasing. As we marvel at the breathtaking diversity of plant life, we can see the subtle hand of the golden ratio at work, guiding the growth pattern of leaves and petals to ensure each one receives its fair share of sunlight. This precise arrangement, based on the value of approximately 1.618, creates a harmonious balance of form and function, a testament to the power and elegance of this mathematical concept. In fact, it's referred to as the divine proportion because of its ubiquity in the natural world. The Nautilus shell, a timeless masterpiece of nature and elegant embodiment of the ratio. The spiral on the shell follows this ratio, creating a visually stunning pattern, that has fascinated people for centuries. But Phi or the golden ratio isn't just found in shells and leaves. It's also found in the human body. The ratio of the distance from the top of the head to the navel, to the distance from the navel to the floor is equal to 1.618. The human face has many proportions that approximate this value, such as the ratio of the height of the nose to the distance between the eyes. Even the ratio of the length of the forearm to the length of the hand is also close to the golden ratio. It's as if nature has built this pattern into the very fabric of our being. To understand what golden ratio is, we need to understand Fibonacci series, this is a series of numbers in which each number is the sum of the two preceding numbers. The sequence goes 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and so on. The ratio of each consecutive pair of numbers in the sequence gets closer and closer to the golden ratio. Like 13 divided by 8, or 21 divided by 13, or 34 divided by 21. The sequence was introduced by Italian mathematician Leonardo Pisano. Indian mathematician Acharya Pinkala also mentions about this sequence in around 500 BCE. The ratio is often seen in the growth patterns of plants and animals, and one classic example of this is the experiment with rabbits. In this experiment, we start with a pair of rabbits, a male and a female, and assume that they are able to reproduce at the age of one month, and that each pair of rabbits gives birth to a new pair of rabbits every month. If we track the number of rabbit pairs over time, we find that the number follows the Fibonacci sequence. For example, at the end of the first month, we have one pair of rabbits, and at the end of the second month, they have given birth to another pair, so we have two pairs of rabbits. At the end of the third month, the first pair gives birth to another pair, and the second pair gives birth to a new pair, so we have three pairs of rabbits. This pattern continues, and the number of pairs of rabbits at the end of each month is given by the Fibonacci sequence. To obtain a golden spiral we can start with a 1 cm square. Draw another square adjacent to the first one to form a rectangle that is 2 cm long and 1 cm wide. Repeat the process with this rectangle, drawing squares adjacent to each other to form a sequence. As we draw each square, we'll notice that a spiral shape begins to emerge. Connect the diagonals of each square with a smooth curve to create the spiral. If we continue this process, the resulting curve will be a golden ratio spiral, with each quarter turn having a ratio of 1.618, the golden ratio this spiral we obtained is very important, because we are going to see it everywhere. Many famous works of art, use the golden ratio to create a pleasing aesthetic, the Vermeer paintings and the Da Vinci paintings may not be masterpieces if it is not for this divine proportion. Ravi Varma paintings are also not different. Even Hokusai paintings follow this pattern. Similarly, many famous buildings, such as the Parthenon in Athens, Greece, use the golden ratio in their design. One another example is the design of the great stupa at Sanchi, which dates back to the 3rd century BCE. The stupa is known for its precise and symmetrical proportions, which are influenced by the use of the golden ratio. Even radius of moon, and earth's structure succumb to the value of phi. 
The ratio can be used to create perfect polygons. If you draw a line segment that is equal in length to the side of a pentagon, you can use the golden ratio to find the length of the diagonal line segment that connects the opposite corners of the pentagon. This diagonal line segment will be in the ratio of 1.618 to 1. This means that if you draw a line segment from the midpoint of one side of the pentagon to the opposite corner, you'll create a perfect golden ratio spiral. But perhaps the craziest fact is that it can be used to predict stock market crashes. In 2010, mathematician and physicist Didier Sornet published a paper in which he claimed that the phi could be used to predict stock market crashes. Sornet analyzed stock market data and found that crashes tend to occur when the market deviates significantly from the expected value predicted by the golden ratio. He claimed that by analyzing patterns in stock market data, it was possible to predict when a crash was likely to occur. While some critics have disputed Sornet's findings, there is no denying the fact that the golden ratio has been used in a variety of fields beyond mathematics and art. In fact, it has been used in everything from music to typography to web design. For example, the golden ratio has been used by musicians like Beethoven to create pleasing harmonies and melodies. If you take two notes and play them at the ratio of the golden ratio, the resulting sound will be pleasing to the ear. A famous music piece that uses the golden ratio to create pleasing harmonies is The Rite of Spring by Igor Stravinsky. In this piece, Stravinsky used the golden ratio to determine the placement of the various musical elements, such as the melody, rhythm, and harmony. The resulting composition is known for its complexity and innovative use of dissonance and asymmetry, which Stravinsky achieved by using the principles of the golden ratio. Similarly, the golden ratio has been used in typography to create visually appealing layouts. By using the golden ratio to determine the placement of text and images, designers can create designs that are both functional and aesthetically pleasing. A famous design that uses the golden ratio is the layout of the front page of the New York Times newspaper. The newspaper's designers use the golden ratio to determine the placement of headlines, images, and text blocks, which helps to create a balanced and visually appealing layout. The use of the golden ratio also ensures that important information is highlighted and easy to find, while maintaining a sense of harmony and proportion throughout the page. In web design, the golden ratio has been used to create layouts that are easy to navigate, and visually appealing. By using the golden ratio to determine the size and placement of elements on a web page, designers can create pages that are both easy to use and visually appealing. In fact, many popular websites, such as Apple and Google, use the golden ratio in their design. But perhaps the most fascinating fact about the golden ratio, is that it has been used to solve some of the most complex mathematical problems in history. For example, the Nobel Prize winner, mathematician Roger Penrose used the golden ratio to create a tiling pattern that can cover an infinite plane without ever repeating. This pattern, known as the Penrose tiling, has been used in a variety of fields, from crystallography to computer graphics. In 2005, mathematicians Canon Sounder Rajon and Robert Lemke Oliver discovered an unexpected connection between the distribution of prime numbers and the golden ratio. They found that the frequency of occurrence of the digits in the decimal expansion of phi was related to the frequency of occurrence of prime numbers in certain sequences of integers. The golden ratio, a mysterious and enchanting mathematical concept, is everywhere in nature, from the delicate patterns of sunflowers to the majestic spiral arms of the Milky Way galaxy. As we gaze upon the breathtaking beauty of the night sky, we can see the unmistakable shape of the golden spiral woven into the fabric of the cosmos. But it's not just the celestial bodies that follow this divine proportion. Even the destructive power of a cyclone is rendered in the same exquisite spiral shape. As we look closer to Earth, we can find the golden ratio hiding in the arrangements of pineapples, adding a touch of elegance and harmony to the seemingly mundane fruit. Let us not forget the humble sunflower, whose radiant beauty is made all the more mesmerizing by the intricate spiral pattern of its seeds, each one a masterpiece of divine proportion.
In Philotaxis, the leaves of a plant are arranged in a spiral pattern that follows the Fibonacci sequence. This spiral pattern ensures that each leaf has the maximum exposure to sunlight and air while minimizing shading and competition with neighboring leaves. The angle between successive leaves along a stem or branch follows a specific pattern known as the golden angle. Golden angle is the angle obtained when we divide a full circle with the value of golden ratio. That is 360 degree divided by 1.618 this angle is approximately 137.5 degrees. By spacing the leaves according to this angle, the plant is able to achieve optimal coverage and exposure for each leaf. The ratio is present in the spirals of seashells and the petals of flowers, in the branching patterns of trees and the curves of waves. The humble sunflower holds a remarkable secret, hidden within the intricate dance of its seeds. Each seed, born at the heart of the flower, must venture outwards in a different direction than the last, to fill the space around the center. And what guides their journey? The exquisite golden angle, that magical ratio that imbues the natural world with elegance and grace. From the smallest seed to the grandest flower, the golden ratio is a testament to the power and beauty of mathematics in nature. The golden ratio weaves its enchanting spell throughout the natural world, from the tiniest microorganisms to the grandest ecosystems. It is present in the graceful spirals of seashells and the delicate petals of flowers, in the intricate branching patterns of trees and the gentle curves of waves. Everywhere we look, we can see the magic of the golden ratio at work, creating beauty and harmony in every aspect of the natural world. Even the curves of ocean waves follow the golden ratio, with the wave crest and trough conforming to the ratio's proportions. This creates a pleasing and harmonious pattern that can be seen in the ocean's waves and in the sand dunes that line the coast. One of the earliest known mentions of the golden ratio comes from the ancient Greeks, who were fascinated by its mathematical properties and its aesthetic appeal. The mathematician Euclid described the ratio in his book Elements, and the philosopher Plato famously connected the ratio to the concept of beauty in his timiest dialogue. Indian mathematicians, such as Bhaskara and Aryabhata, were known to have studied and used the ratio in their work. The golden ratio is a fascinating and ubiquitous concept that can be found in nature, art, architecture, and design. From the spiral patterns of seashells to the curves of the human face, the golden ratio is a fundamental element of the natural world, and has inspired countless artists, architects, and designers throughout history. Thanks for watching. Please do like, share, and subscribe.